if I've got bills, then it's one or the other. I can either eat or I can pay my power bill. And if I don't pay the power bill, then it snowballs. So it gets out of hand. I was working, I was only on minimum wage, but still be just times throughout the week where I've had like no money for the missus and the kids to the point that we can't afford to buy food and bus fares. This general cost of living is just through the roof. Sometimes I skip meals or I even go to families that's got food, but I don't have any food or any families. To meet this demand, the sector came together to develop the food relief framework. So we really identified the problem and looked for solutions. We undertook extensive consultation to understand the nutritional, cultural and social needs of people who are receiving food relief. When I stayed on the streets, I had to go and access um, centre care for some food, um, just like a food pack. Thank you, thank you so much. Struggle doesn't discriminate, so I think everybody goes through it at one point in their life and everybody's going to have to experience it. And if you don't, then you're really lucky and you should probably try and help others. A lot of people are using the service and um, if there's a line of people well, they can only get half the line. And that's unfortunate to the other half that miss out. Families that need to spend 25% or more of their weekly income on food are at risk of food stress. So what we did was we mapped these across Western Australia and the high risk areas are shown in red. One of the key findings of the food relief framework was that the food relief sector cannot address food insecurity alone. We need the commitment of a diverse range of stakeholders to work together to help us do this. I've learnt to swallow my pride in that regard, but it can be upsetting that I'm not supporting myself at 44. I feel I should be able to stand on my own two feet and that will come in time but at this point in time I have to access help without that I don't eat.